Hello there my fellow tech friends, it's Alex here for Notebook Check Reviews and we finally got our hands on Intel's new chips for 2023. While we have to wait a couple of days until we can see what their Raptor Lake HX flagships are truly capable of, we will kick things off with the P-series CPUs today. Specifically, we will be talking about the 1360p, attractively packaged in the stunning Lenovo Yoga 9i right here in front of me, and see how Intel's 13th gen fares against AMD's current offerings in the form of Ryzen 6000 and of course Apple's new M2 Silicon. While the Beastly H and HX chips are designed for proper work or gaming machines and the U-series are more optimized for efficiency, the P-series is the middle child in Intel's lineup and is designed for portable performance machines with a specified TDP of around 28 watts. While we shouldn't expect too much change from last year's CPU, I mean after all the chips share the same layout without a ton of changes to the underlying core architecture, let's see what Intel can deliver in 2023. While the biggest changes this year will be happening at the high end, the P-series is pretty much identical to what was on offer last year. The CPU is still manufactured with Intel's 10 nanometer process, even though some optimizations have been made to stay competitive. Apparently Raptor Lake still uses Alder Lake dies, but the cores themselves are what's new for 2023. The new 1360 sits in the middle of a much more streamlined CPU portfolio, and within the P-series Intel will sell 4 different SKUs in total. The two i5 models come with 4 performance and 8 efficiency cores, and the already well-known and to be quite honest quite outdated Iris Xe GPU with 80 execution units. The i7 models bump things up to 96 EUs and while the 1360p keeps the same layout, the flagship 1370p is almost an H-series performance chip with 6 performance cores in total. In our case the 1360p can reach up to 5GHz for up to 2 active cores and 4.5GHz respectively for up to 4 cores. The efficiency variants can run at up to 3.7GHz for up to 4 cores or 3.5GHz for everything else. Alright enough with the technical bits, let's see what this puppy can actually deliver. Let's kick things off with single core performance. In our combined performance rating, the new Raptor Lake chip can score a solid lead not only against its direct predecessor, but also in relation to Intel's last year's mainstream flagship, the i7-12700H. While Apple's new M2 and M2 Pro can gain a lead in Geekbench, they sandwich AMD's most recent offering, the 6800U in our total performance rating. By the way, if you want to dive deeper into individual benchmark scores, please be sure to head on over to our written review. My colleague Andreas did his very best to give you this detailed analysis, so please be sure to check out his article. When we put performance into perspective with efficiency, the story for these chips changes drastically. Intel might win the performance crown, but its chips need about 24 watts to achieve the scores we measured. Apple is still king when it comes to efficiency and while Intel improved compared to last year's 1260p, even AMD is still ahead with their 6800U. Regarding multi-core performance, Intel was able to outperform Team Red's offering this time around, but has to take a beating from Apple's latest N2 Pro. It will be very interesting to see how this story changes once AMD's new 2023 chips are available. In regards to efficiency, the situation is even worse compared to our single core tests and the new 1360p is only able to win against its Alder Lake H cousin, the 12700H. Apple's M2 from last year is the absolute king in this comparison, followed by the M2 Pro and AMD's 6800U. To see if you can at least expect longer battery runtimes compared to last year, we also tested power consumption during idle states or when browsing the web. Again, things do not look too promising here as well and the new chip even consumes more power in our standard Wi-Fi test. When it comes to GPU performance and gaming, we can keep it very short as always for Intel's integrated XE chips. As with the last two CPU generations, Intel didn't really make any improvements to their GPU performance and so AMD is in a very good spot even with last year's 680M. Talking about the 680M, we tested a gaming test on Team Red's integrated GPU. 
And while it cannot really keep up with even Nvidia's low-end offerings, its leaps and bounds ahead of Intel and even allows for some casual gaming in full HD. You can find the link somewhere up here or in the description below. While it's not that easy to compare Apple's GPUs within the same context, the wildlife extreme scores show that it's not really a competition anyways, with even the basic M2 outperforming the Iris XE graphics by a significant margin. Alright guys, let's wrap things up for today. You have to give Intel credit for actually squeezing about 5-10% to more performance out of the same manufacturing process. But apart from that, the new CPUs really do not offer that much more than what was available last year. I mean yes, from a pure CPU performance standpoint, Intel is still your best bet. But since this performance is achieved without any regards for efficiency, this brings a whole new load of problems. Raptor Lake P and Alder Lake P chips for that matter have been used in thin and light machines like this one. And when it comes to thermal and power constraints, the chips are only rarely able to fully stretch their legs. And for these devices an argument can be made if you even need that much raw CPU grunt or if a slower CPU and maybe a bit more GPU performance like with AMD 6800U or Apple's SoCs wouldn't be preferably anyways. The same problems carry over to everyday use case scenarios, when more heat and more power mean hotter devices with louder fans and shorter battery life. But as it has been, availability might not allow you to actually decide which CPU platform to buy in 2023. While you can of course always buy a MacBook, for those of us wanting to stay with Windows, it was already pretty hard to buy a premium AMD powered machine last year with the 6800U. And we will have to wait and see if this will change this time around. But please guys let us know what you think about the landscape for mobile CPUs for this class of devices. And be sure to check back regularly to not miss our coverage for Intel's new Raptor Lake HX CPUs, since those will be very exciting. That would be it for today. Please consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a ton for watching. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.